TTFE, or FEP. They sound like secret military codes, but in fact they are unique coating methods for metals used in containers and machine parts in the manufacturing sector. For example like this, or like that. We're going to look at some examples from companies working in everything from chemicals and food drinks to paper and packaging, who have found the solution to many of their problems within Preglon. Impreglon has a presence in 13 countries throughout the world. This is the Swedish facility. Fluoropolymer coatings are applied here, for example, Teflon. The coatings can be combined with various ceramics and metals. The coating is sprayed onto the machine part. The part is hardened in furnaces up to 420 degrees. Then it is ready to be returned to the customer. The different coatings have a wide range of properties. Let's look at some of them in more detail. I'm confused. What we have here is a metal part, a sledge, and a container with some weight in it. What are they doing here? We need to measure the friction. What is friction? Low friction or high friction? Here's a normal steel plate. We're going to do a small test to work out the friction of a normal steel plate. I thought that's what was happening. It's a very simple test. Can I do this? Yes, I can. On the uncoated plate, the traction is measured at 5 kilograms. What if the plate is coated with PTFE to reduce friction? What difference does it make? The sledge is back, but this is another metal part that feels a bit like the surface of a frying pan. This was done to minimize friction, and in a way you're right, the coating is like a frying pan. This is to reduce friction for plastic parts. Let's try. I'm pulling. <laughs> the traction is now 2.5 kilograms. In other words, a 50% reduction. But who benefits from low friction? All manufacturers making plastics or products that need to move very quickly in the process. So the stuff being made can slide more easily along the production lines with less friction, saving money in the long run. The lower the friction, the lower the wear and the fewer the stoppages. Let's try to increase the friction. How many kilos of traction do we need now? This one feels really different. It has a slightly rubbery touch to this coating. What is it? This is a high friction coating. We use it to increase friction for customers needing more grip in the production process. See if you notice any difference now. It feels like I have to work all the time. Yes, it's good, isn't it? Okay, let's go. Oh, yes, this was different. With tungsten carbide on the plate, the traction is 10 kilograms. This is a 100% increase. So who benefits from high friction? Flextrus makes packaging materials for the packaging industry. They needed more friction on some of the rollers in the production process. What was the difference after Impreglon coated the rollers? Our production consists of complex machinery and a stoppage causes lots of extra costs. The problem we had were rollers to move the material, which could be paper or plastic film. And the surface needed to have the right friction for the particular material or it wouldn't work. We used to apply tapes of various kinds, but they needed to be replaced too often. 
That's why we started looking for a company that could help us creating a more durable surface. The rollers were coated with ceramic, combined with a fluoropolymer for higher friction, as well as non-stick properties. Before, we had to stop production several times a year to change the tape on the rollers. But now, with Impreglon coating, we can avoid unnecessary stoppages. Maintenance costs are much lower as a result. But how do we know which coating to use to minimize friction with the customer's particular material? In other words, the material for which the customer wants to improve the friction properties. We've had a TV and some technical equipment, but I'm a bit confused about this part, which looks like it's from a Tetra Pak or something. Why is it there? Many customers want to know what low friction coatings we can apply for their particular material. So they often send their material to us and ask us to create a coating with a friction as low as possible. I'm going to try with my fingers, because this feels like there's hardly any resistance. We've got a reading. We've got a really high reading, virtually the maximum of 1.0. Strange when it feels like hardly any friction. Lots of people make the mistake of using their fingers. What feels like low friction actually isn't. That's why we've got a machine to do it. And in fact, there are a lot of uncoated metals around. Let's try with a piece of aluminium. The friction is quite low still, around 0.2. But now for the big test. Let's see how we did. The low friction test is starting now. What a difference! 50% below the previous result. We halved the value with this coating. If I'm so surprised as an amateur, how do your customers react when you give them the test results? They're amazed that it's so easy to measure the reduction of friction for their particular material. Not any old material, but the customer's own material. And it's easy with this method. It may be a good idea to increase or reduce friction in machine parts like ceiling arms, guide rails, folding plates, driving rollers, braking rollers. OK, so here are some new metal parts. But the thing I'm most interested in is this liquid, which I know I mustn't stick my fingers in. This liquid is highly aggressive against aluminium, and I thought I'd see what happens when these parts here get in touch with a highly alkaline solution. So this is an uncoated part, and this is a part we've coated. Exactly. And as you can see, the uncoated part is almost starting to boil in the cleaning agent. I don't understand. Who's going to stick their machinery into corrosive liquid? Point taken, but for maximum production speeds you don't want to stop and clean manually. You want everything to happen automatically, without opening up the machine. Exactly. Acid as well as alkaline cleaning. Some of the chemicals are aggressive to aluminium. That's why we created this test, which shows just how effective our anti-corrosion coatings are. Gaia Nairo is a global company working in a number of different fields. One of the fields is the manufacturing of parts used in flue gas cleaning. How much of a help has improved corrosion protection been? 
We didn't have any problems for years in the American and European markets. But when we entered the Chinese and South American markets, we noticed very high levels of chlorine in the fluid gases. After a short period, we realized we had serious corrosion problems. We had to find a solution, and fast. That's when we started working with Impreglon. All our corrosion problems ended after Impreglon coated the atomizer skirts. We were able to retain our good reputation. For us, that's the main benefit. One of our projects in South America involved replacing the old atomizer skirts with new ones coated by Impreglon. The cost of this was 26,000 euro. So our aluminium parts, one coated and the other uncoated, have been sitting in the bath for an hour. Let's see what happened to the uncoated part. As we can see, a lot of the aluminium has disappeared. The consequences for the customer would be devastating if machine parts would start to corrode like this when alkaline cleaning agents are used. You obviously recommend the correct coating, so let's see how the other part looks. Look, there's no corrosion at all on this part, so with the right surface treatment, there's no need to worry about corrosion. After an hour in the bath, the aluminium part shows signs of serious corrosion. Almost a millimetre has disappeared. The coated part is completely unaffected. Effective corrosion resistance is useful in aggressive environments, like flue gas cleaning systems, engine parts, offshore parts, reactor vessels, autoclaves. Now we need to talk about non-stick. Please explain. There are various types of non-stick. I thought I'd start by showing you how adhesives and labels and things like that can get stuck on rollers. The term non-stick is pretty self-explanatory. Here's a coated surface and an uncoated surface. You can start by putting this one on here. Down there? Yes. Okay, it's stuck, I think. Yes, try and get it off. I can hardly get it off my fingers, but it won't stick to the roller. See, it obviously just falls off. Give it a good push there. Now take it off. It hardly moves. Mm, okay, this could happen if you have problems with adhesive. The label does not stick to the roller because it is coated with silicone FEP which has excellent non-stick properties with, for example, adhesive, bringing obvious benefits. This is printing ink. For fast cleaning in a printing company, we recommend coating the ink containers. To illustrate, we have one coated and one uncoated container. Let's try. This is to show the inside of the ink container. Yeah. 
It looks a bit like a car that's been washed and waxed. How did you do this? We call this a hydrophobic surface, and it stays dry a bit like a waxed car. This means the container can be quickly cleaned with hot water before starting production again. The ink does not mix with old ink, so you only get the colour you want. The extreme non-stick properties of the FEP prevent the ink from sticking. Moving on from ink, this looks like ordinary dough you could bake at home. But what is it doing here? The problem is that it's got stuck. Production has stopped, in other words. It's obvious that this metal has an uncoated surface. Let's see what happens with a coated container. Sir de Vindegar is a bakery, operating round the clock at a fast pace, with three shifts. At the start of the baking process, the prepared dough has to be transferred from one container to another. This used to be problematic. We handle 200 to 300 kilograms of dough every day. When you empty a batch down into a hopper, but nothing comes out the other end, it's hard work climbing up and pulling it down by hand. It sticks because the container is uncoated. The dough comes off easily after the container is coated. There are dough residues everywhere inside. The dough needs to be scraped off and wiped clean, something that takes a few minutes. If the container is coated, there's no need for any of this, just a little wipe maybe. But the point is, the dough does not stick. We work seven days a week in three shifts. Say I save 10 to 15 minutes on my shift, and it's the same on every shift, that sums up to a hundred hours a year. A bakery is a busy and stressful place, so every minute counts. Good non-stick properties are useful in dough containers, hoppers, moulds, plates, We've shown how manufacturers around the world benefit from Impreglon's coating methods. Whether your part is new or old, we can make it like the original, only better.